Linear motion is motion in a straight line, so we only have two directions to consider. Let's suppose that vectors pointing to the right are assigned a positive sign, and vectors pointing to the left are assigned a negative sign. In most problems that we deal with, the initial time is t equals zero seconds. So let's suppose that at t equals zero, a car is at the zero position. It's at the origin of the coordinate system. Let's suppose that after 100 seconds, the car is at this position. So we can consider the final position vector of the car. That's denoted by the letter S. So we need to be careful here. S is not the speed. Uh, we can think of this letter S as the space traversed by the car. It's a vector pointing to the right, so it's assigned a plus sign, and its magnitude is 2,500 meters. Now we have no idea how this car moves as it goes from 0 meters to plus 2,500 meters on the axis. But we can consider its average speed. That's the distance traveled which is plus 2,500 meters, divided by the time taken for the car to cover that distance, which is 100 seconds. Now we are interested in the average distance that the car covers in one second. That's one unit of time. We see that that's 25 meters. Of course, in some seconds, the car may do more than 25 meters, and in other seconds, the car may cover less than 25. If the car's speed is constant, in each second, it will cover 25 meters. Now, we can write this a different way. 25 meters divided by one second is the same as 25 meters multiplied by s to the power of minus one. You see, one over s to the power of one can be written s to the power of minus one. If you want to convert this into the more usual unit for the speed of a car, that is kilometers per hour, we need to convert meters to kilometers. So we divide 25 meters by 1,000, and we need to convert one second to hours. Well, there are 3,600 seconds in an hour, so one second is one over 36 hundredths of an hour. So if we work this out, you will get 90 kilometers per hour. So on average, the car covers a distance of 90 kilometers in each hour. And uh, we can also write this as 90 km h to the power of minus 1. Now, more usually, we will work in meters per second. Now, average speed is a scalar quantity. Let's consider average velocity. Now, this is a vector quantity. To get the average velocity of an object, we need to get its final position vector and divide by the time taken for the journey. So we want the average velocity for a particular journey. Now, here we are also going to get 25 meters per second. But to emphasize that we are talking about a vector quantity, I will put in this plus sign. So what did we do in this calculation? Well, we took the v a vector quantity, which is the final position vector of the car, and divided by a scalar quantity, the time. So we, all we did actually was scale a vector. We scaled the vector s by a factor of 1 over 100. Now, we still haven't mentioned anything about how the velocity of the car changed as it moved from 0 meters to plus 2500 meters. Let's consider the simplest situation. That is the situation of constant velocity. So this means that when t was zero, the car had a speed of 25 meters per second, and it maintained that speed for the entire journey. It didn't speed up or slow down. Let's look at the velocity time graph for such motion. Velocity is the vertical axis. So we go to 25 on the v-axis. At t equals naught, the speed is 25 meters per second to the right. And for all subsequent times, the speed is 25 meters per second. So the graph will be a horizontal line. At least for the times between 0 and 100 seconds. Let's suppose, we, let's ignore what happens after 100 seconds. By the way, you might notice that the distance traveled by the car is the area of this rectangle. It's the area um, under the velocity time graph. You see, we just multiply 25 by 100 to get 2,500 meters for the distance traveled. Anyway, we'll cover this in a later video.
Uh, for now, we are just interested in considering the different types of velocity that the car... Now let's consider this situation. Suppose that at t equals zero, the velocity of the car is one meter per second to the right. And at t equals 100, the velocity is 49 meters per second to the right. Let's show this on the velocity time graph. At t equals naught, the speed is one. At t equals 100, the speed is 49. Obviously, I'm not showing this to scale. Um, I've chosen the numbers 1 and 49. Uh, they will actually work out, well, they will actually solve the, this problem, provided that the velocity of the car behaves in, in a certain way. We could imagine many different scenarios for this car. The car's speed could increase, then its speed could level off, speed could even decrease, then its speed will level off again, say, and continue on increasing until at t equals 100, its speed is 49. Now we've no guarantee that the car will cover the distance of uh, 2500 meters for this particular graph. But I've set, set up these numbers in such a way that if the car's speed increases uniformly, then the car will cover the distance of 2500 meters in 100 seconds. When I say the car's speed increases uniformly from 1 meter per second to 49 meters per second, I mean that for each unit of time, no matter how small, whether it's one second, half a second, quarter of a second, a millisecond, which is a thousand of a second, whatever, the speed will increase by the same amount. So if our unit of time is one second, the speed will increase by a certain amount and after the same unit of time, let's say that unit is one second, well that's the usual unit that we work with, the speed will increase by the same amount. So this length here is the same as this and so on. Basically the velocity time graph will be a straight line. So we will only consider situations where the speed is constant, in which case the velocity time graph is a horizontal line or the speed increases or decreases uniformly. In this situation, the speed is increasing uniformly. Now, I said before that the speed increases by the same amount each second. So here we have one second of time, and we are interested in this distance here. For uniform motion, this distance is known as the acceleration which is also the slope of this line. You see, if we pick any point on a line, increase x, or well, t in this case by one, the amount by which we have to go up or down is the slope of the line. So how do we get the slope of this line? Well, um, we know that to get the slope of any line, we need two points on the line. Well, we have the coordinates of this point, and we also have the coordinates of this point here. They are 0, 1. Well, we could do this from the diagram. Get the rise, which is this length here. That's just 49, the y value of this point, minus the y value of this point here. 49 minus 1 is 48. Divided by the run, that's just the difference of the x values, 100 minus 0. So we end up getting 0 0.48. So in one second, the speed increases by 0 0.48 and this the units of this distance are meters per second. So this is the amount that the speed increases by in each. Now this quantity has the units of speed meters per second but we are dealing with a new quantity, acceleration. Um, this is the increase in speed of the car each second. So the car increases by 0.48 meters per second each second. By the way, as an aside, we could have imagined a finer unit than the second. We could have imagined our unit of time as being the millisecond, which is one thousand of a second. In that case, the car will not increase by 0.48 meters per second. In one millisecond, the car speed will increase by 0.48 over a thousand of a meter per second. 
well actually per millisecond if our unit is the millisecond but anyway that's just an, as an aside we can make the unit as fine as we like and easily uh, get the, the acceleration in terms of those new units if we know the acceleration in terms of meters per second per second but we will normally work in meters per second per second now we're dividing by s here we know that 1 over s can be written as s to the power of minus 1 it's 1 over s to the plus 1 um, so instead of dividing by s we can multiply by s to the power of minus 1 and we just add the powers so if we add minus 1 onto minus 1 we get minus 2 so this is read meters per second per second um, we could also write 0 0.48 meters per second squared if we like so we can write it like this or like this it's the unit of acceleration now let's look at the general notation for linear motion at t equals naught the initial velocity is denoted by u the final velocity at some time t later is denoted by v now I want to make a very important point here for some reason in linear motion u without the arrow and v without the arrow are not the magnitudes of the velocity the speeds but they're actually used to denote the vectors now this is confusing because in previous videos we saw that if we have our vector u then u without the arrow just refers to the length of the vector u but for some reason in linear motion the arrows are left off now that can be a serious source of confusion so we need to be very careful here um, you might say it makes no difference but I'm afraid it does because you see the magnitude of a vector is always positive but a velocity vector can be positive or negative depending on which direction it's pointing in so if we're going to consider u and v without the arrows as being vectors then u and v can be negative you know um, if we're talking about magnitudes u and v must always be positive so we need to be very careful here so u can be negative and v can be negative if we consider u and v without the arrows as being vector quantities it would probably have been safer to leave the arrows over the letters it would probably lead to less confusion but unfortunately um, the arrows are removed when we discuss linear motion so I'd better maybe uh, follow that convention of leaving off the arrows for linear motion so in general if we have our velocity time graph and we want to get the acceleration we just get the slope of the line as we've seen before so that means we need to get this distance here well that's just v minus u I'll leave on the arrows for now but I can take them off again later and we divide by the time taken for that change in velocity to occur so the time taken would be this distance here so we divide rise by run and that gives us our acceleration which is actually a vector you can see it's the difference of two vectors and that's divided by the scalar t if we rearrange this formula multiply both sides by t add u vector u to both sides we can write the final velocity v in terms of the initial velocity u the constant or uniform acceleration a and the time taken t as I've said before, for linear motion, these arrows are left off, but we just need to be very careful that we know what we're talking about. That if we leave off the arrows, um, V, U, and A are not the magnitudes of the velocities and the acceleration. They're the actual vectors themselves. So um, V, U, and A can be positive or negative. If they were magnitudes, they would always be positive. I suppose that if we're going to leave off the arrows and if we want to talk about the magnitude of the velocity we would have to use these vertical lines here so this would be the speed the magnitude of the velocity is the speed I think it would probably have been easier if we maintain these arrows and then if we want to talk about say the final speed we use the letter V if we want to talk about the initial speed we use the letter U but unfortunately that's not the convention that's followed um, so if we want to talk about the magnitude of the velocity we will have to use these vertical lines so this would be the final speed of the object if we want the initial speed we'd have to write it like this if we want the magnitude of the acceleration we have to use our vertical lines 
By the way, we will see that the acceleration can be negative. Um, the slope of this line is positive, as you can see, but we could have imagined a situation where the line is sloping like this. The velocity time graph looks like this. The slope is negative. Um, so, you know, A can come out to be negative. In our situation, A is positive. Well, we can obviously see it from the graph, but, but you know, V is greater than U. So V minus U is positive. But when the final velocity is less than the initial velocity, V minus U will be negative, and hence the acceleration will be negative. T, the time taken, is always positive. So it all depends on V minus U.